months that maybe speculation has been a bit yeah, it's difficult with broken legs. Initially, when you first diagnose uh, a broken leg, or I think we said uh, six to eight weeks with our initial um, planning, but that's, it's been eight weeks now, but he's probably still a couple of weeks away from resuming, so it's, it's hard with breaks. I mean, they heal slower, faster, and there's, there's no, two the, no two that are the same, I guess, and um, he's still on track to, to get back into the side in the next couple, couple of weeks, but yeah, probably a few weeks behind what we initially thought. Yeah, because he missed a fair bit of the pre-season with an Achilles injury, uh, he just needs to get some some match fitness. So, um, yeah, expect him to play a couple of weeks probably in the state league before we see him again at AFL level. Sam, a tough love message after the Melbourne game. Great performance to get a win after that. Do you think that message has sunk in or are you going to persist with that or perhaps the players understand what you're on about now? Yeah, I think um, as a coach you can't go to that well too often. You can't, um, you know... Uh, yell and scream too much because uh, the players become almost immune to that but um, we were disappointed with how we played against Melbourne for that first half and uh, fortunately we got a, a really, I mean a great response against the Pies. Um, that was a good win at home but uh, obviously now we've got a, we've, we've re-focused our, uh, our energies into, into trying to beat Carlton and you know Carlton have won three of their last four. Um, they're full of talent, they're really well coached. Um, this is going to be a tough game for us so uh, you know, 4.40 Sunday at the MCG, we've got to make sure we turn up with that same frame of mind that um, that we had against uh, Collingwood. From your point of view and what you sort of get out of the games, I mean, obviously that win over Collingwood was a bit of a statement game, but do you learn more about the players um, this week in terms of how they back up? Them? Yeah, we will. I think, I mean, um, and I said straight after the Collingwood win that to respond, that has to be player-driven, so we'll still prepare the players with strategy and systems that we think are going to win this game. But we need 22 players to turn up and play their role again with that same, uh, I guess, fierce intensity that we saw last Thursday night. That's one of the best footy games I've seen. I mean, from a spectator point of view and talking to a lot of fans and a lot of football people after the match, you know, that was, that was a great night. Um, we've got to now uh, replicate that same sort of um, energy and enthusiasm every game we play, whether it's Collingwood on a Thursday night, Carlton on a Sunday, or um, you know the Suns the following week. We've just got to bring that that same enthusiasm every week that we play. Has it changed anything on the training track? Has it, has it different? Well, trainings look pretty sharp. Probably the last six weeks. I know we had that bad loss against Melbourne, and uh, we were disappointed how we played. But we've won four of the last five. Um, our intensity around the training track in the weights room with the way that we're preparing has been um, has been really impressive the last sort of six weeks. I know we didn't have a great start to the season. We we lost three games that we were really in um, against three really good clubs, but um, we're still internally quietly confident that we're playing the right way. We're starting to filter some guys back from injury now and, and hopefully we're going to have a big second half of the season. Is it only Yeah. yeah, that's right. I mean, we have to play our way, but also, too, we have to respect what the opposition do. And um, this is a good side we're playing against this week. I know that they didn't start the, the season off that well either, but their form is pretty good. You know, they're, um, they're full of talent. They, uh, they're really good inside. I mean, they're third in clearances. They're number one in first possession. They've got um, an exceptional midfield. We'll have to be at our best to beat them on the weekend. And... Um, if we're even 2 or 3% off our best, uh, it's going to be a real struggle on Sunday. But it's an important game for both clubs and it should be a real cracker. Always midfield's going to be key. But for you in the first five minutes, do you want to just see the intensity in the midfield that you saw last week? And if you can match that, then you're off and on. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we, haven't, we still didn't win the first quarter last week. We're only two from, uh, two from eight now in first quarter wins. Um, the energy was there, the excitement was there. We just made some fundamental mistakes with a little bit of anxiety and a little bit of, you know, we, we turned the ball over uh, too often in that first quarter. But our indicators were all still really strong. So contested ball, tackles, clearances were all in the positive, but we weren't in front on the scoreboard. So uh, there was no panic for us at quarter time. We came in and we were still playing the right way, but we weren't in front. We're, there was no panic like, oh, there's another first quarter we haven't won. I thought we still executed the fundamentals really well. It was just the, just the basics, the turnovers, the couple of skill errors that, 
that probably um, allowed Collingwood to score too easy, too easily against us in that in that first quarter. Are you seeing any improvement in that area? I mean, a lot of those sort of fundamental errors are more noticeable in defence. Yep. They're such a, it's such a young defence. Yeah, it's where we're turning the ball over. I think sometimes too, and we just have to encourage, particularly our younger players. It's okay to make a mistake. You got to get back on the horse, and you got to turn up again for the next contest. And I think too often, particularly now, because this industry is so highly scrutinised and reviewed, um, you know that if you make a mistake, it's going to be talked about, it's going to be um, replayed. Um, so we have to ensure that players aren't afraid to make a mistake still. they still got to do the very best that they can to put themselves in the game. Um, but that's the challenge, I guess, of coaching a young group is, is to forget about mistakes and to ensure that the, the players are still determined to, to make amends for, for an earlier error. Challenge the boys to be more consistent. Obviously, a string of few wins together. After such good performance last week, if you don't get this one against Carlton, what does that mean? I uh, don't want to speculate on the result before it's happened, but um, there's, there's internally there's still a really good feeling in our footy club, and um, the culture is really strong here. As I said, the boys were. Um, we've won four of the last five. We had a really bad half in the first half against Melbourne. Um, that really sat in the guts of our playing group for or all of our staff for, for 10, 12 days. Um, looking in the players' eyes before the Collingwood game, without telling them, it just felt like we were going to win that match. There was um, there was a lot of determination that they were going to make amends, and that could have gone either way. When you get the, I get the emo the, the emotion from the coach during the week about uh, you know the standards of of what we saw were unacceptable. To see the, the response we got from the playing group was, was really impressive. But it means nothing if we don't back it up this week. You know, we have to, we have to turn up with that same determination and enthusiasm that we're not going to lose this game of footy. And um, that's the challenge in a long season and in an even competition, is that you have to bring that same intensity to every game that you play. And on Carlton, it seems like Bryce Gibbs is going to re-sign as a potential player that would have come back to one of the Adelaide clubs. Does that Oh, not so much. I mean, I, I haven't heard that, but um, you know, we we're looking at it, the entire free agent uh, market, and um, you know, we have been pretty active in the trade in in trading players in the last two or three seasons. So, we're always looking to make our squad better at the end of every season. And you know, David Noble's working pretty hard behind the scenes at the moment with our recruiting guys. We've got the um, national championships here in Adelaide um, on the weekend, so we're still trying to identify the best talent for us. Um, it's always unfortunate when a free agent re-signs because you have to, you know, rule a, rule a line through them. But yeah, we'll, we'll just keep scouring the entire market and uh, we'll see who's going to be available at the end of the season. Um, um, I know the club's trying to sort of take the focus away from it, but obviously Tex goes back to the MCG. Um, the fact that you are trying to take the focus off it, have you mentioned it? No, I didn't even really thought about it, to be honest. It's not an issue for us, you know. Um, um, Tex is back bigger and stronger uh, than, than even before the injury last year. He seems fitter, he's lighter. Um, I don't think it would be an issue at all for Tex and certainly not for us. He looked good on Thursday night. Are you sort of saying that he perhaps lacked the, that sort of eight hill touch and you obviously get once you start playing? Does he look a bit better at training this week? Or? Yeah, he's flying. He's, he's looking really sharp. Uh, unfortunately, with all the training that you do and even playing at State League, nothing can replicate AFL speed. And we just saw a couple of times, um, he just misjudged a couple. And, and I think like everybody that was there, players, um, spectators, coaches, um, that was a high pressure game. And uh, for a player who's been out of the game for 12 months, I still thought he played a fantastic game for us. And um, I think that will help him. Those, those four quarters last week, uh, adjusting back to AFL tempo, uh, I think we'll see a, a much improved text again this week. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he needed to have that game, get the get that one out out the way, kick four points. Um, hopefully, he kicks kicks a bit straighter this week. Just one last thing. Uh, what have you changed in the last three or four weeks, or is it just attitudes? Like you said, we've got the game plan, but have you tweaked it? Because I must say, it's the only game I've seen live last yep. week. But it looked like less handball around the back lines and more direct. Play. Yeah, we've probably been a little bit more direct, but um, even in the games we lost those first three, um, we're still playing a very similar style. We just weren't playing four quarters. Uh, and typically it's the same, I think, for every club. If you can get an even contribution from your 22 um, and over, over four quarters, you're going to be in most games. It doesn't matter who you play now, it's so even. Uh, we were lucky to get away with a couple of wins. You know, the Western Bulldogs game even, we, 
we were really poor for two quarters of that game, for a half of that game, first and last quarters. But for the second and third, we we were able to play much better. I mean, it's you go through almost every game this year. It's it's rare that we've played four solid quarters. Uh, thankfully, we saw it last Thursday night uh, against the Pies and. Um, we're trying to educate our players to, to play their roles, to sustain four-quarter performances um, uh, against any side, not just the, the top eight, the top four or the top two.